A Treatise of Satan's Temptations, Part 2 By Richard Gilpin A Discourse of the Malice, Power, Cruelty and Diligence of Satan Chapter 2 Part 5 Of the advantages which Satan hath, and useth, for the introduction of error and more. But if we believe that among this infinite number of volumes, there are thousands of lies, millions of unproved conjectures, millions of millions of idle, unprofitable fancies, then do we in express terms, pronounce them guilty of ignorance, and of ignorance so much the more dangerous, by how much the more bold it is, to avouch itself in the light, and to obtrude itself upon the belief of others, who instead of being better informed by it, shall but increase their own blindness. Were there nothing to be said but this, that there are such a vast multitude of commentators upon the Bible, which do all pretend to expound and explain it, it would of necessity admit of these conclusions, 1. That the Bible hath in it things so dark, or at least our capacities are so dull. That there is need of great endeavors to explain the one, or assist the other. 2. That the knowledge of men is imperfect, for if all or most men could certainly interpret the scripture. There needed not so many volumes, but that one or two might have signified, as much as now whole libraries can do. The imperfection of our knowledge being thus laid open, it is easy to see what advantages the devil may make, out of it for the promoting of error. For it must now become our wonder, not that any man errs, but that all do not. We find it easy to impose anything upon children. It is an easy matter for a trifle to cheat them out of all they have. Surely then Satan may do as much by men, who are but children in understanding. The Apostle, Ephesians 4:14, puts us in mind of this hazard under that very similitude, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. How fitly doth he resemble us to children! Their weaknesses are, 1, want of discerning, they see not the true worth of things. 2, credulity, they believe all fair speeches and specious promises, and the hazard of both these is in this, that it makes them unconstant, uncertain, and fickle. And such are we made by our ignorance, so little do we truly discern, so apt are we to believe every pretense, for the simple believes every word, Proverbs 14:15. That, as the apostles' metaphors do tell us, we are easily tossed from one conceit or opinion to another, as a ship is by the waves, or a feather in the wind. Cap lambda u epsilon delta omicron nu iota zeta mu epsilon nu omicron iota kappa alpha pi epsilon rho iota phi epsilon rho mu epsilon nu omicron iota. 3. Thirdly, a third advantage which the devil takes against us in his design of error, is the bias of the mind. Were our understandings purely free, in a just and even balance toward all things propounded to its deliberation and assent. Though it were imperfect in its light, the danger were the less, but now, in regard of the bent and sway it is under, it is commonly partial, and inclined to one side more than to another, and yet the matter were the less. If only one or two noted things had the power of setting up a false light before the mind, but there are many things that are apt to do us this mischief, which have the same effect upon us that bribes have upon persons interested in judgment, which not only tempts them to do wrong, but so blinds their eyes that they know not they do so or at least not in so great a measure. The mind is biased. 1. First, naturally to error rather than truths. The corruption of our nature is general, and doth not only dispose the will and affections to practical iniquities, but doth also incline the understanding to error and misapprehension. And that seems to be the ground of Christ's assertion against the Jews, John the 5th 43. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not, if another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive which implies that men are naturally more prone to believe an impostor, than one that speaks the most certain and profitable verities. And besides this general inclination to vanities and lies, there are, if some think right, some errors that are formally engraven in the nature of fallen man, as that opinion to be saved by works. For not only do all men that have any apprehensions of a future eternal state, resolve that question of obtaining salvation into works as the proper cause. And indeed no other could have been imagined if the scripture had not revealed the redemption by the blood of Jesus, but the Jews in John the 6th 28, when they propound that question, what shall we do? That we might work the works of God? Take it for granted, that works of some kind or other are the causes of happiness. Possibly some impression of that notion, while it was a truth. As in the state of innocency it was, may yet remain upon our natures, though by the fall the case is altered with us. 2. Secondly, the mind is biased by bodily temper and complexional inclination. The varieties of complexions introduce varieties of humors and dispositions. 
and the understanding being necessitated to look through these, as so many colored glasses, is apt to judge, that is, to misjudge, according to the misrepresentation of objects. 3. Thirdly, sometimes habitual acquirements have the same influence upon the understanding that natural humors have. The arts and sciences we study, our ways of education and employment, are but so many prejudicate prepossessions that do secretly taint the mind. 4. Fourthly, there are also accidental inclinations, which, though not customary, have the force of a second nature, because their working is violent and impetuous, and these, which are from a wounded conscience or excesses of melancholy, have a bias more than ordinary, they lay violent hands upon the understanding, and with a mighty torrent run it down. So that if an error be offered, that is suitable to such fears or misapprehensions, it can scarce miss of success. The extraordinary turbulences of some other passions, as anger, love, etc., have the like effect. 5. Fifthly, vicious habits do so much bias the mind, that the understanding must needs be defiled by them. Nothing can more prepare the mind to a wicked error than a wicked life. An error of indulgence being so grateful to corruption, may readily find favor, with the understandings of those that know not to do good. Because they have accustomed themselves to do evil. 6. Sixthly, there are external things that have no less power on the understanding than any of the foregoing. And these are custom, education, and interest. These stick so close, and work so subtly, that though there are few that are not in disputable cases, influenced by them, yet none are able or willing to take notice how and by what steps they do engage them to pass sentence against truth. And indeed that man must have a singular measure of suspicious watchfulness, and clear integrity, that is not deceived by them. And the best way to keep clear of the mischief that these may do us is to be severe in our suspicions on that side, to which custom and interest have their tendencies. 7. Seventhly, I might note that there is something considerable to this purpose in the nature of spirits. Some spirits are unfixed and volatile, and these are soon altered by their own unsteadiness. Others are tenacious and unflexible. And if such be first set wrong, it is not an easy thing that will reduce them to truth. Others are soft and ductile persuaded by good words as soon as strong arguments. And again, some are of such a rough, sour, contradictious temper, that they will sooner choose to run wrong, than comply with the persuasions of those that offer truth. Even for that reason, because they are persuaded to it. So that the truth which, if none had minded them, they of themselves would have embraced, they will now refuse when it is pressed upon them. Out of a cross and thwarting humor, because they hate nothing more than to do as they are bidden. To come a little nearer, let us consider how these things show their power upon the mind to sway and incline it. It is indeed true. That in things that are clearly and strongly propounded to the evidence of truth, and it cannot but judge according to the evidence of truth, and cannot be guided by the will to judge contrary. Thanks.